Hi everybody, JJ here with ASUS. Have you been thinking about building your first gaming PC, but you've been a bit confused when it comes to all the different types of components that are out there, wondering about compatibility, whether it's all gonna work and whether you're gonna have a stable and reliable system? Well, don't worry about it. Regardless of whether you're accounting for the CPU, the graphics cards, how many watts that you're gonna have in terms of the power supply, how much memory, the storage device, the cooling considerations, we've gone ahead and actually defined all the different components you're gonna need at three different price points. So that you're gonna have a great, reliable, and fully compatible experience when you go about building your first gaming PC with Asus. So let's go ahead and jump into the three different builds that we've got for you while I go ahead and give you some insights into different components that you have within each one of these builds. For our first build recommendation, this is going to be coming in at around a $625 budget. Make sure to go ahead and check out the corresponding link in the description below to make sure that you get up-to-date pricing in relation to the actual different components that we have selected. So let's talk about the CPU. We've gone ahead and selected AMD's Ryzen second generation 2600 series processor. This is a great processor for pretty much just about all types of usage scenarios, whether you're talking about general productivity, gaming, or streaming. You've got six cores and 12 threads, and the CPU also supports overclocking. It's also been fine-tuned in terms of additional performance since it's been launched through additional firmware updates, which have already been implemented on ASUS's series of motherboards that are compatible with this processor. However you look at it, this CPU choice is going to be a great foundation for your build right now and definitely as you move into the future. Next up, let's go ahead and talk about the motherboard. We've gone ahead and selected the Tough Gaming B450M+. This is a great board that's going to give us a great foundation for a gaming-centric system. It's got a cool stylized aesthetic. It also is going to feature upgrades specifically in terms of audio networking that are going to be beneficial to gamers. And it's got some cool RGB connectivity so that if you want to be able to add a little bit more flair to your system through customized lighting, you can do that. In terms of some of the good upgrades, you're going to have one, an improved VRM heatsink design compared to, let's say, our Prime series of entry motherboards. That's going to allow for a little bit cooler, more reliable temperatures. You're also going to have the benefit of an improved isolated audio design with Tough Gaming Audio, which is just going to give you a overall better audio experience in music, movies, and games. There's also some cool presets that you have that allow you to go ahead and tailor in the sound a little bit more specific to the different types of games that you might be playing. And you also have our Tough Gaming LAN design. This essentially includes specialized packet party software called TurboLAN, where you can easily go ahead and prioritize your network-centric applications, making sure your games get the priority over anything else that you might be running on your system. And speaking of RGB, there's even an RGB header as well as an RGB lighting zone that's on the motherboard so that if you want to connect things like fans or LED strips like I've got in this system right here, you're going to be good to go. Next up, let's talk about the memory for the system. We've gone ahead and selected a 16 gigabyte kit of DDR4. 16 gigabytes gives us a really good foundation in terms of having more than enough memory for general productivity, especially if you're doing a lot of multitasking or you have a lot of tabs open in your browser, but you also want to be able to make sure that you've got more than enough memory to be able to run just about any type of games. In this respect, we've gone ahead and selected also a little bit of a higher frequency than the baseline. Now, most second generation Ryzen series processors can comfortably run speeds up to about 3000 or 3200 megahertz. With this in mind, we've gone ahead and selected a 16 gigabyte kit that operates at 3200 megahertz. And thanks to our motherboard featuring a technology called DOCP, there's an easy option that allow you to quickly enable that speed right out of the box. Next up, let's talk about storage. We've gone ahead and selected an SSD because we want our system to post and boot quickly to be able to install games, updates, and applications really quickly, and overall just have a snappy responsiveness to when we're using our system. We've also wanted to go ahead and go with a little bit of a larger size drive so that we can comfortably install everything from Windows to different types of personal files to, of course, all the games that we want to be able to run on our system. In this in mind, we've gone ahead and picked the Team Group MP33. This is a PCIe NVMe M.2 based SSD, which is 512 gigabytes, more than enough space and a very fast and reliable drive. And also because it's an M.2 based SSD, we don't have to worry about connecting any type of cables. So the installation process is gonna be that much more straightforward. And this drive is fully compatible with our Tough Gaming motherboard. So next up, let's talk about the graphics card, a critical part to any type of gaming build. Now with a graphics card, we definitely want to ensure that we're having a card that's built to be able to ensure reliable and long-term operation, especially when we're talking about, I think, an entry-level build where every dollar counts. In this regard, ASUS graphics cards are produced utilizing an auto-extreme production process where the only manufacturer that actually utilizes robotic assembly and precision, as well as analysis of our graphics card production. Ultimately, this just gives you a more reliable and accurately produced graphics card. In addition to this, it's gonna be very cool and quiet in operation because of a specialized dual fan design with a good heatsink assembly. It's got a cool looking backplate, and it also actually features a little bit of an out of the box overclock. And speaking of overclocking, you do have a little bit of headroom that if you wanna use the GPU tweak utility to customize the fan curve or overclock the card, can also easily take advantage of that. And if you're also somebody that's going to potentially be upgrading to a G-Sync compatible monitor, the card fully supports that. 
all the way around, this Tough Gaming graphics card is going to pair really well with our Tough Gaming motherboard in terms of the look and feel. And I also really like how compact it is, which is going to work really well for our compact chassis. Next up, let's talk about the chassis or the case. Here we've gone ahead and selected a chassis from Cooler Master, a great partner, specifically the Q300L. Now the cool thing about this chassis is it does come in a tough gaming variant, which for about 10 to $15 more will allow you to really complement the entire look and feel to really pair the aesthetic between the motherboard, the graphics card, and even the chassis. But the baseline version of this is gonna be a great choice. It can support up to six fans, it's compact, it has a nice, clear side panel so that if you want to be able to take a look at the cool inside of your system, you can do that, which is especially nice if you're going to be upgrading to any type of RGB components over a period of time. <laughs> it's got a lot of flexibility in terms of how you can position different types of fans or different types of cooling configurations, and you can also actually adjust where the actual front IO connections are mounted on the chassis. All the way around for definitely the price point that it's at, it's definitely going to be a solid option and also one that's very compact that doesn't necessarily compromise on airflow. Last but not least, I'm also a big fan of the fact that actually in terms of being able to clean the chassis, which is going to be a critical part to ensuring good airflow over time, it uses two large magnetic dust filters, which can be easily removed from the top and from the front of the chassis. Now, last but not least, let's talk about the power supply. We've gone ahead and selected power supply from a great partner, Seasonic, specifically the S12 III, 500 watt. Now, why did I pick this power supply? Well, 500 watt gives us more than enough room, not only for all the components that we're gonna be utilizing in the system, but also gives us additional flexibility that if we later upgrade the graphics card to a higher performing GPU with more power requirements, whether we overclock the processor or upgrade the processor, add more memory or add multiple fans with different types of RGB lighting requirements, which also can draw power, you've got an additional headroom. At 500 watts, you definitely got more than enough breathing room for all the different items that you would run in this build, but also for upgrades down the road. I'm also a big fan that the actual cables are flat and they're entirely black. So they're gonna really complement the overall look and feel that we have with the rest of the components of our system. So to overall, that wraps up the key components that we're gonna need for being able to build our first gaming system. Now, some of you might be wondering about optional upgrades. One might be the CPU cooler. You don't need to upgrade the CPU cooler. The inbox cooler that comes with the 2600 is gonna be more than capable enough to be able to ensure stable and reliable operation and cool operation. If you wanna be able to upgrade the CPU cooler, we'll link a couple of options in the link down description below. And predominantly what this is gonna get you is a little bit lower temperatures, but not necessarily better overclocking headroom. But for some of you that also maybe want a little bit more of a stylized aesthetic, an upgrade to a cooler that features some form of lighting might also be something you'll appreciate. In terms of airflow, if you also want to add a little bit more airflow to your system, you could optionally add maybe two or three additional fans to your system. We'll go ahead and provide recommendations for some low cost, good options in terms of traditional uh, non-RGB based fans, and then also a couple of options when it comes to RGB based fans. The main thing that you're gonna to wanna to keep in mind that if you do utilize an RGB based fan is that the motherboard features only one header. So you're gonna to need to use a splitter. Thankfully, the, the fans that we've gone ahead and selected feature integrated splitters. So they can go ahead and connect to the actual motherboard linked to each other and you would be good to go. Ultimately, just keep in mind though that any fans that are ultimately split will all feature the same control signal. Meaning that if I set one fan to let's say red, all the fans are gonna to be to red. You wouldn't have unique independent control. But at the same time, this is a nice way to be able to easily take advantage of that RGB header that's on the motherboard.